Good morning, Cam. Uh, thanks for coming along. I really appreciate your time today. Let's start off with you introducing yourself and your business and what you do. Uh, Cameron McLean. Um, I'm the founder and director of uh, DI Sign Group, and we are a, basically a fabrication business of everything signage. So um, we're industry supplier, we supply to um, other sign companies, builders, um, commercial, stuff like that, a lot of retail um, nationally. So yeah, we, we build all the big signs on the Melbourne skyline and pylon signs, et cetera, large, large fabricated illuminated signage. Right. Give me an example. What what should I do if I'm driving down the road? What I see is one of your signs. Yep. Um, so yeah, one of the one of the more enjoyable um, sort of type signs we build a, a sky sign. So um, on the Melbourne skyline, you'll you can see um, the Pearson Building. Um, we've done Novotel um, Novotel Hotel sky sign stuff like that. So these are the exciting ones hanging off the top of a. 20, 30 story building, Abseil has installed, stuff like that. Um, yep. Or then, you know, your, your big um, main sign at the front of your Woolworths or something like that, your big pylon sign, we, we could build that. Um, so they're, they're sort of notable ones that, you know, um, someone's got to build it and it's us. So Fantastic. That's great. So what geographic area do you cover? Um, we are Melbourne based, um, but we do. We've we've been a national company since we started. Um, so, yeah, East Coast is is the main sort of direction, for, as you'd expect from you know a Melbourne based business. Um, but we do get into WA, a little bit of Darwin, stuff like that, a little bit in South Australia. But yeah, pre predominantly East Coast. Great. And how long have you been in business? Uh, I think we're about to turn 13, so um, 13 at the end of the financial year this year. So, yeah, been going a little while. Like, lucky 13, I hope. Lucky 13, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and how would you get into the business? Um, an interesting one. It's sort of a bit by default. I was a carpentry apprentice when I was young and then uh, work dried up for my boss. There was No one was handing out apprenticeships at that stage, so... I ended up falling into uh, the signage game, started sweeping the floors at a factory to make money when I was 17, just to, you know, till I found another carpentry apprentice. And then 10 years later, I was still there and nearly running the place. So, um, yeah, it was something a bit through default. And then I left there, um, went on to um, basically become a sign installer after that, um, did about four years of that. And then, um, DI Sign Group started as Digital Icon back in the day. And yeah, we just started picking up a little bit of work as you do as an installer and yep. somehow got into the manufacturing game. And then, yeah, 13 years later, we're nearly 100% in-house um, of every, every part that we make. It's all Australian made, Melbourne made. Um, we outsource a little bit of little bit of stuff like certain steel, laser cutting, stuff like that. Um, but other than that, we're... Yeah, nearly 100% in-house. So. Great. So who'd be your ideal client or customer? Um, we've sort of, we're having a bit of a, a change back to our roots at the minute. It's a, um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pushing, pushing the company back into a direction of um, purely an industry supply business. Um, we started chasing, you know, big architectural wayfinding projects and, things like that over the last few years and that's been fun and great and we've really honed our skills and um, whatnot in in that area but we have found the last couple of years that there, there's there's less and less money in that direction you, you're getting crunched too much so we're actually pushing back into dealing not a hundred percent but I'm trying to get it to about 70% industry supply. So I'll supply to other signage companies that basically can't, haven't got the capacity to build what we build, um, but they've got clients that need that and, and want it. So they can sell the job, project manage the job. Um, we can build it or, you know, design it, build it, engineer it to whatever um, length they need or length they don't need. So, um, yeah, basically... Predominantly producing for other sign companies is, is our main sort of goal at the moment. Um, saying that, we, we work with a, a handful of chosen shop fitters 
Um, you can't work for too many shop fitters because all your dates end up clashing. Um, but then, um, yeah, we have a, a handful of other clients that are sort of, you know, our, our small group of uh, chosen clients that we choose to deal direct with as well. So, wow. good. So, what's the biggest challenge you're facing in the business right now? Um, at the moment, we're actually humming along really nicely, which is <laughs> um, good. fabulous. Um, yeah. It's always. Uh, Milton, I, I think I, I would have said to you, it's either time or money. So um, basically, if, if you're worried about money, you've got time on your hands. And then if, you, if you're worried about time, you, you tend to have money. So it, it comes down <laughs> to cash flow or time, basically, are the, are the biggest ones. Um, as per everyone, we've had our deal, uh, our share of staff issues over the last couple of years, but we spent a lot of time restaffing um, and and listening to our staff during that time and weeding out a few that sort of didn't really fit our mould. Um, mm -hmm. But right now we've got amazing staff and just sort of change change a few directions internally and, um, yeah, everything's working really well. So Great. So what's one or two actions you've taken because of the pandemic and how are they working? Um, one or two actions, I, th I think... It, it might have been one of those ones that you, you did take your staff for granted a little bit. We, we've always tried to be very, um, we're not a huge company. We don't have a, a massive amount of staff. So we are, in in one way, it's great because we can be quite personable with our, with our staff. Mm -hmm. um, but probably just going a little bit further to understand what's important to them as to not just what's important to the business. Letting them know a little bit more that we actually do care and do it. staff reviews is, is something that we're checking in with more often. Um, not necessarily just a monetary thing, but um, yeah, just making sure people are happy. What you know, where are their goals? Where where do they want to be in six months or two years? Like um, as simple as that. Are they happy day to day? Is there anything that needs to be changed? Um, so that's probably a big one. Um, second to that, it's obviously was reviewing where you make money. Um, I think it, it was hard because certain certain areas of our business obviously dropped away instantly, like retail and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, we, we scraped through pretty well, I think, um, and we were lucky to have some good projects on at the time through, through the two years of, you know, pretty heavy um, strict strict rules in, in Melbourne. Um, but, yeah, it, it come down to everything got very tight. So it was, you know, it, needed, it was important. Where, where's the money make, getting made? And um, are you focusing on the in the wrong areas, I guess? Right. What's your biggest learning you've had since you've been a business owner? <laughs> uh, running the a biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> running a business. Um, Oh God, that's a good one. Um, well, I, I don't come from any type of formal business training at all. Like I'm a tradesman at the end of the day, so I, th I think, um, yeah, the 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 actual day to day running of the business has has probably been the hardest part, but the most rewarding part as well. Um, as any business will tell you, the, the highs and lows are incredible, um, and yeah unpredictable you, you just never know what you're up for half the time so um but yeah thanks to people like yourself you know you can get some good advice out there and um yeah like it, it's it's learning what what the rewarding parts are for you as well and and then having to still spend time on the, the other parts or um you know surround yourself with people that are happy to do the other bits for you so yeah I don't know whether I answered that or not, mate. But <laughs> so, what have you learned about yourself during this journey? Uh, how resilient I am. <laughs> Good. Yeah, uh, that would that would be the biggest one. Um, yeah, my resilience is um, yeah pretty strong. I think so. That that's right. that's been a good one. So, how do you find your inspiration each day to to do what you do? What inspires you? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, as like anyone would say, like any job, you, you're going to um, have times where you're really inspired and then you're going to have times where you just, you know, aren't. And it, you've got to just realise those times when you aren't. And I, I sometimes, not, not verbally, but I, I give myself a mental kick in the butt. Um, you might go through two or three weeks where you're just sort of coasting and then, yeah, quite often I have to give myself a get off your ass and get it done. You, you've got to get back into a momentum. And the minute you do that, it's quite incredible. And the very next day you'll wake up, you'll get out of bed, you'll come to work with a new lease of life. And that's when things change and move, you know. So it's your attitude is, um, I, I reckon it would have to be 80 or 90% of manifesting how things run day to day. So if, if your attitude's poor... Um, especially in bad times, it's easy to go further and further down. Mm. Um, what what you have to have the resilience to do is change your mindset and look up when you're drowning. Like, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's when things change. And if you don't, you, you're gone. So what would you say to anyone thinking of going into business, Cam? Um Make sure you've you've got very good knowledge of what you're doing. Actually, it's do some research. It's, it's it's all very well to think that there's a market there for something. There might they may not be. Um, have a very clear um, idea of how long you're willing to commit to it, um, and don't be afraid sometimes to pull out early. If it's not working, sometimes there, there's reasons for it. Timing can be everything. Um, but yeah, you need to be, you need to be careful um, and really think, you know, about the, the big impact of it because it's not something that's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a big commitment. So you've got, you've got to be, very, very confident in what you're doing. Know that the market needs to be out there. Have some cash flow behind you and uh, be prepared to put in some huge hours for the first five years. Yeah. If you started your business again, what would you do differently? Um, it's a great question. I've, I've really enjoyed the ride. So I, I yeah. don't, don't know that I'd do a lot different. Look, Obviously, I'd, it would be easy to say, oh, I'd, I'd go and do a business course or something like that. But in a way, it's not a natural thing for me to do, so I probably wouldn't. Um, the, yeah, I, I'd probably, yeah, try and find a mentor a bit earlier, like a, a really good mentor. like, And someone, someone from the industry that you're in can be really beneficial. Like there's brilliant mentors like yourself out there. Um, and look look into the mentoring stuff early and a lot of the um a lot of the local councils order mentoring programs these days and stuff like that but yeah get get one right from the word go it's probably the best advice i'll give to anyone right so what what about along the same line what's the best advice you'd give to your your 18 year old self My 18 year old self yeah um, <laughs> That's a great question too. I don't, I don't know. I'm not someone that lives with a lot of regrets. Um, I don't know. It should be regrets. It's more, yeah. you know, what you've learned and what would you do differently or what's um, important? Because I, I think at 18, we think we know it all, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, stop stop smoking. I, I was a horrible smoker for a long time. <laughs> Give up earlier. But, um, yeah, me too. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, keep going with your fitness and stuff like that. That's easy to um, easy to let go, and it, that changes things as well. Being fit's a, a good one, so yep. I drink good. so much. <laughs> what does the future look like, and what do you see as the main challenges moving forward in your industry, both for you personally and for the business? Um, I think. Oh, capacity is going to be our next big challenge. Um, we're getting to a stage where uh, we, we were five or six years ago when we had to move factory into a larger premises. Um, we're sort of on a push to, I'm on a bit of a push to, to grow the business another 20 or 30% in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, but our capacity is going to be an issue there. So, 
finding the right staff to and cash flow balance as well as premises and having to be able to move things around get it in and out the door without having to double triple handle things which obviously makes issues with damaging items and and redo um storage but I, yeah i don't really particularly want to get another full premises or move um, but then if you can't find something next door, it becomes quite a tricky one. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so, um, so our location is, is one problem and then it'll be um, yeah, staff, balance, balance of staff for cash flow. Yes. And finally, what's going to keep you accountable in business in the future? What are your plans uh, there? Myself? Um, the fact that I've got a really big mortgage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Love a mortgage. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm someone that's always been very accountable. I, I know the, the day to days of the business. And if you're not passionate, it can slip away from you really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, you just got to find those, find those day-to-day -day challenges or whatever it may be that keeps you engaged. Um, and if you're not, learn a new skill, do something to, you know, I've, I've learned 3D modelling and stuff like that in the last couple of years just to change my day slightly um, so that if I'm finding myself bored or disengaged, you can do something that is rewarding to, to um, get you back, you know, into it, I guess. Um, other than that, I don't know, mate. <laughs> That's great. Good, right, Kent. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Is there any, any offer you'd like to make from your business that can go in there and use letter or something you could do that may help your business? An offer to any prospective customers? Um, yeah, obviously, we're happy to. Um, we can do free shop drawings and maybe a um, five percent discount that anyone wants to look at um, for for any signage package that they're doing we don't deal a hell of a lot with one small one-off clients but um yeah we're happy to um anyone that's coming from here drop the um drop the interview in in your and in your inquiry and um yeah we'll, we'll knock five percent off any close fantastic cam thank you thank you very much for your time that's been great perfect no thanks man really, really appreciate it yeah.